This time on Easy On Cars, I'm starting to put things back together. I made some custom brackets for my LS2 coil packs, made some custom length spark plug wires, started messing around with the radiator fans, and I even got into ECU tuning. Last time we left off with the coils and wiring harness just hanging in the engine bay. I went ahead and made a proper wiring harness that would be waterproof, as well as started thinking through a plan to mount the coil packs. I went to the internet and found out people like to use threaded rod to mount their coil packs. So I went ahead and planned out a way to do the same thing. To mount this all to the engine, I was going to need some brackets. So I went ahead and cut up some angle iron on possibly the world's sketchiest workbench. With that out of the way, I was able to start mounting the coil brackets to the engine. I used jam nuts on the threaded rods to hold the coil packs in place, which seemed to work out pretty good. I found a forum that provided a list of all the things I would need to make my own spark plug wires. Check the video description for that URL. This part's all about cutting the wires to length and then crimping on the ends. I suggest putting the boots on first and then using dish soap or dielectric grease to help you out. If you only want to do this process once, make sure you don't cut the insulator whatsoever. I may have had to remake a few of the wires once I figured that out. The way you can check if the plug wire you made is good is do a continuity check across it. If you have really long wires, you can just measure the resistance and it should be about 45 ohms per foot. With that all sorted out, I put them on the car. Not quite as compact as the original coil packs, but we're going to be happy with these once we start making boost. Speaking of boost, we're probably going to need some injectors in this thing. Here are my new injectors. So these are 370cc injectors. Um, the factory SVX are 270cc, so this will give us a little bit more fuel. These are out of a 1994 Infinity Q45. Um, that was actually a V8, so there was, uh, these are readily available. Um, I only need six, obviously, but these also came in the 300ZX as well as the R32 and R33 Skyline. You can get the same exact ones. So that means there is a lot of aftermarket support for the side feed style like this. Um, I don't really know yet what the next steps after this will be. I imagine I'll need more fuel beyond this eventually, but um, for starters, this is what I'm going to use. I got these on wholesaler closeout from Rock Auto. I think for a set of six, it was about 140 bucks. So that is a lot cheaper than you're gonna find any bigger injectors, um, you know, from Deechworks or something like that. So that's what I'm gonna run, and I'm gonna go ahead and install these bad boys now. There is such a thing as an injector puller, so if you care about your old injectors, don't do what I did and pull them out with channel locks. Since the new injectors had been on the shelf for a while, I coated the seals with dielectric grease to make sure they would seal up good.
Now to crimp on the connector. Here I'm using heat shrink butt splice connectors. Anytime you're using heat near a fuel source, you need to be very careful. With it all put back together, you can just barely see the injectors peeking out. Now it's time to tune this thing. More seriously though, it did take a lot of software tweaks to get this thing running. Lucky enough for me, the folks over at lcone.org.uk have reverse engineered the ECU enough to have fuel and timing maps for this thing. So that's where I got started with my tune. That brings us close to present day, where we've been trying to debug a sink loss issue with the ECU. In this case, the culprit was the cam sensor, which we were able to debug with the oscilloscope. Time will tell if I stick with the Subaru VR sensor, but for now I'm just happy to have this thing idling. So I have been playing around with my fan control and you can see I have one and two fans tucked very tightly in there. And I did actually wire them up correctly this time. I had them wired to the wrong wires before. And I got them all sealed up, so that's good. And I did verify, so this is the, let's see, the main fan relay, and then the main fan relay two. So I verified continuity between one of the pins on each of those relays and also coming directly from, these are the two wires that come from the stock harness, and I verified continuity between those and one for each relay. Then I verified that grounding them would indeed turn on the relay, so that would essentially just tell the fans to start. Then I went ahead and wired up to the MS3X, this top connector here, through the nitrous port, so the pin used for nitrous occasionally, and set it up in the software such that it knows to t uh, ground the nitrous pin when you want the fans to come on. And so to just test that for you quick, I'm in test mode. And if I click the on button, we'll see what happens. I can already feel a breeze actually too. Toggle those back off. So that has been the fun with uh, fan control today. So pretty excited that now I will have fans as per the mega squirts discretion so awesome beyond everything we've covered so far my friend dan and i have been attempting to tune this thing having confidence in a base tune is going to be key to getting any more performance out of this engine we have been taking advantage of the auto tune feature in tuner studio which is available in the professional version this helps us dial in the afr tables in a real world application just by driving down the street That was a hell of a lot of work to represent in a 10 minute video, so I better save some for next time. Easy on cars. It's no surprise that uh, you'll see about 11.4 runs per game in this yard. Kind of surprised though that Comeric Park and Target Field focus.
Tatella is not going to survive the fourth inning with Presley due up. It'll be a wall sack windows pitching change as the Rockies go to the